Hello everyone, Josh first back again with some more over it. Now today it has been a couple days since I made my last over it video, but I wanted to kind of get a feel for the game and kind of understand a lot of the things going on. That way I could better, you know, make content for you guys over the game. Now of course the game is still in soft launch. Um, I've already made a few videos on how to get into the game early if you want to play early. Um, you know, a little account progress. I'm up to 34 now. I've got some other things going on, which I will show you throughout today's video. Now, today's video is going to be a beginner guide video. Now, it may not be perfect. Um, it may even change in the future. But for now, I think, you know, I got a good hand, handle on things. And I can kind of share my experience with you guys so you can hopefully better understand the game as well. So, anyways, we are currently on the main lobby. Uh, let's first just go from left to right uh, up the top here. You have your character avatar You have your username your ID which you could share that way you can add other friends and stuff like that if you want to play um, My level is 34 you could see your exp bar the percentage uh, above that which you can see is 20% All right, let's go ahead and click that And this will actually open up kind of your profile tab now. I do apologize if it's going a little bit slow I have like 20 different things going on at once right now All right so, right here is your character uh, profile page, is kind of what I like to call it. So, you can see your partner. You can even swap your partner by clicking this right here. I've had, you know, Sophia there for, I don't know why, but I'm actually going to go ahead and switch to Yuri. Because uh, she's been kind of my, my girls lately. Looking really good, Yuri. There you go. So, you got that there. So, that's how you switch, you know, you know partner. That way you can see it in your avatar. Um, you can actually change what you're saying is right now mine says Josh first on YouTube You can even change your user ID because it is not unique which means that a lot of people can even have the same username so All you're really looking for is the account ID. That's what's gonna be unique to you um, We got our guild here, which we'll talk about that later my guild of course is Josh first don't have any room for new players yet um, If we get any inactives, I will kick people and then make some more room obviously you can see your support. This is where you can select and set up your support for each element. Um, a lot of people like to call these elements different things. People like to go, you know, they like to say red, blue, green, yellow, purple. Um, or some people like to go fire, water, earth, light, and dark. You know, either way, it doesn't matter. It's fine. Both ways work. Um, you can also have your favorites tab here, which you can select and, you know, register your favorite heroes to be shown in the lobby. Which I never really bothered to do that, but I'm going to do that here today for you guys. So let's go ahead and put you in there. You, you, you know, we're just going to go right like that. Boom. That's fine. That is fine. Boom. There you go. Um, of course, you got your message and your game information, which you don't really need to bother with that too much. So that is pretty much the character profile area. All right. Now we have D gems, which are dimension gems at the top left here. This is basically your premium currency to buy premium things from the shop and to do your gotchas for your summoning on banners. Then, of course, you have your gold. Uh, they give it a really weird name. I like to just call it gold. Keep it simple. Um, then you have stamina, uh, which is, you know, it, it goes up as you level up your account rank. So that's nice. As you can see, I'm already at 217 at only level 34. So that's cool. Um, and then you have your friend points, which you can use for, friend, for the friend shop. Uh, which I'm currently at 1630 which you get those from friends uh, Using your characters when they go into battle in vice versa. So very very cool there We also have this little bad boy here. I love this little button. Um, it lets you basically see uh, a, a Majority of the things that you currently can do right now and what you own which is really nice as you can see I have two out of five PvP battles currently available I have zero out of five raids right now. I will have a raid available in 37 uh, seconds. We have our essence there, which we'll talk about that later. We also have our um, premium currency that you get for doing gotcha summons. After I believe you've accumulated 100 or basically 10 multis, you can go ahead and get 30 of those and do a legendary gotcha, which we'll show you that later on. We also got our crystals. We have, our, again, our friend points, uh, our arena medals, which is the currency basically. Um, so, I mean, you, you know, you got our expeditions as well, which is like, we got, uh, you get one run of that per day. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, there you go. I mean, that's pretty much just a quick little, it's just a nice little screen to have to kind of show you quickly some of the things that you have without going to your full inventory and looking that way. We have your notifi uh, notification bell up here, which 
if there's any kind of notifications, you'll get notified right there. We also have our mailbox, which of course will show your system, which would usually be from the company themselves, sending you like free gifts or whatever for an event or whatever. Uh, and then we have shops, we have friend points, we actually have uh, events for stuff that you actually do in a game when you complete different events and get rewards from that. We have our temporary storage in case you over exceed. And then you have your receive mail log, which basically just shows you in detail all the things that you've received over the course of you playing this game. Um, so very, very cool there. So that is the mailbox. All right. And then we have the in-game chat, which is really cool. They have the uh, opacity thing where you can turn it all the way down or all the way up, which is really nice. You can select channels, uh, you know, channel 1 through 999. So if there's a channel that's not being used, you can actually tell your friends to go to that channel. And then you can just talk to your friends. And with 999 channels available, more than likely you're going to find at least one or two channels that are going to be pretty empty. So you guys can have cool little conversations amongst yourselves. Or you can just straight up whisper player versus player shot right there. Or you can just talk with your guildmates. So very cool. Um, easily to just get rid of that. You can even talk during battles as well if you really want to, which is awesome. And then we go up here. And this is a tab that pretty much has pretty much everything going on. You have your assemble. That's basically where you go to build your team. Your inventory, where we'll see right here. Uh, you can just see everything. You got all the equipment, or you can just sort by a weapon, armor, or accessories. There's only three types of weapons, guys. Or, I'm sorry, equipment. Uh, you got your soul stones. Basically, you get these from doing various things in a game. Basically, when you collect 50 of any one stone, you can actually trade that in for that SSR of the character. So, yes, SSR characters are farmable in this game. Um, and then we have other which basically shows you everything else now these here these are called skill stones when you get enough of these you can actually skill up your characters um, And then you have these little low tier ones that basically you got to collect 10 of to trade in for a big one So that's kind of how that system works. It's like a crafting system um, Same thing with these here. These are called elixir when you get enough of a certain type of elixir You can actually up the grade of a character and sometimes when you get to a certain point I believe it's like when you start hitting like grade B or higher you start needing not only the elemental elixirs you also need the rainbow elixir as well so those are there to help you actually upgrade the grade of your character um, and these right here are to upgrade the ability these tablets here so I mean that's just a quick little rundown of what all that stuff is uh, and then we have guild here Let's go to the guild real quick. As you can see, this is our current guild right now. Uh, the guild is maxed out 30 out of 30. We are level 2. Um, guild skills, you can actually use your D gems to upgrade guild skills, which allows every member within that guild to collect um, these different increased rates. Either your hero drop rate can go up, your item drop rate, your EXP can go up, and your Arn. That's basically what they call the gold in the game, which we talked about earlier. Uh, you have your approval. Your invite guild member, your guild log, guild info, you know, all that good stuff. You can see all the people that's joined. Welcome to the fam. All right, so that's guild. Let's go out here and let's go to the friends list now. All right, so you have the friends list. You can see all the people that's currently online or when they were online last. You can even send them private message. You can remove them. You can even view them, which you can see here. You can view them, see their support see their favorites, see all that good stuff, what guild they're in, you know, all that, all that good stuff, right? Very, very cool stuff. And then you can do add friend. You can add them. You can search them. If you do a search, you can actually type in their user ID that they've given you, and boom. You can even type, try to type in their username, but I think ID is the way to go. Because like I said, some people can have the same username. So you definitely want to go by the ID. Um, awaiting approval, you can see who sent you a request and request sent that'll show who you've sent a request to and they're still you're still waiting to see if they approve or not so there's that um then we have login bonus this basically shows you the 28 27 28 30 day calendar whatever depending on the month right i think it, i think they always go by 28 but i could be wrong but um it'll just show you the rewards you can get nonetheless as you can see on day 28 this time around we get a free ssr hero summon ticket on day 28 so that's really really cool um, so you can just see there's various rewards here, which is awesome. Uh, every second day of the week so far, it looks like we're going to be getting a free Art SSR Hero Summon Ticket. Um, three of. So, you know, that's 12 of them just for this 28-day login alone. I don't know if it's always going to be like that, but still, nonetheless, pretty, pretty damn cool. All right. Then we have guide missions. 
this is probably one of the most important things to do in the game when you first start now i will probably make a video talking about the guide mission separately but basically this is a lifetime achievement mission basically where they want you to go through and accomplish these different tasks and in return they give you a lot of good rewards so as you can see right now i'm actually currently on mission 72 and there's currently only 77 missions available and it'll tell you what things to do each time you click and they even little have a little bonus reward on certain stages like for example i can get a hundred percent um more of the d gems if i actually purchase them in the shop with real money uh on step on basically area or i'm sorry on uh, mission 75. uh for example if i go to 72 they're gonna give me 300 d gems as a bonus on 73 which is enough to do a multi but unfortunately i gotta do four more multi summons before i can do that so i'm at 16 out of 20 and i've been free to play this entire time and i'm already halfway to my 17th so it is very possible to get the 20 that you need okay for free to play i have not spent a penny i've only been playing for a few days and i've already done 16 multis 17 if you include the free ones and when i mean free ones i mean tickets if you use the tickets i don't believe they count towards your uh draws but still nonetheless i've done like 17 multis then if you include that for free so you're definitely gonna be able to hit that 20. the 31 may take you a while but uh, definitely the 21 is is definitely going to be able to be done um and then not to mention when you do it i'll get another multis worth for free from the bonus so that'll take me up to 21 and then i'll only need nine more to finish up all of these so very cool there but definitely want to do that like i said i might make a video on that separately going into detail with every single reward and if it's and how good it really is and stuff like that so anyways now we have regular missions now you have daily missions that you want to complete every day um you got weekly missions you got monthly missions and then you have lifetime achievements as well so for basically doing all these different things they're going to reward you etc etc for example uh fortify 880 heroes that's basically foddering 880 times and uh, i've done it 874 so far so i'm already ready getting very close to getting that 20 d gems for that um monthly weekly daily i mean it's pretty self-explanatory there um but that is the mission you definitely want to do those dailies every day now we have events currently the events going on are the launching anniversary login event luxury goods available for seven days so in a seven day login we get an sss hero summon ticket which is awesome I believe I'm going to be on day five after reset today. I do believe. Um, we have a bingo event going on right now. Now, these events may not be going on when you watch this video because, you know, obviously they're going to keep changing depending on when you watch the video. Uh, but, yeah, you got a bingo event going on right now. I've already cleared the board once. I'm on my second attempt now. Get a bunch of iron, a.k.a. gold. Uh, we got Luna's Gachi event mission. You complete all those. She gives you those tickets. And then you can trade them in here and possibly get a bunch of these cool rewards here, which is pretty awesome. Um, as you can see, I still have quite a bit to go <laughs> to finish all of this out to reset it for the first time. But uh, I still got almost, you know, 30 days left. So I'm hoping I can get some of those S grade rewards very, very soon. But anyways, so that is the event. Very, very cool stuff there. And then we have buy Dimension Gems. This is for you, uh, for you out there that like to spend some money on a game. This is the place that you'd want to go. This is where you actually buy the premium currency, the D gems, which you can see here. Um, prices aren't too, too bad when I compare it to a lot of other gacha games because basically it takes 300 to do a multi. In a lot of games, you're, you're looking at about $40, $50 per multi um, in, in a lot of occasions, while in this game it's $30 USD. $30 for one multi now this is not including that you can use your coupons which you can see here you could uh, you got to use these before they expire but they are helpful if you do want to spend money on the game especially with that one that gives you 100% that's basically going to give you 600 gems for $30 for that purchase so um, those tickets could be helpful if you are indeed going to be a player that wants to spend some money on the game and this is not any kind of special sales or deals either which I, I bet are going to have even more value these are just the base value and the base value, $30 per multi, isn't too, too bad. Um, uh, let's see here. And then we also have packs. We're going through every tab, guys. Regardless if you're free to play or pay to win or whatever, we're going through everything in this video. So do bear with me here. All right. Like I said, I'm doing a lot of things. So the 
It's taking a little bit to load. So these are some of the other packs you have going on right now. You even get some of the uh, like these regular rewards. You get these for free. So when I reach account rank 35, I'm going to get 30 DGEMs for free, 30 for 40, 50 when I hit 45, and then 100 when I hit 50. So you get all those for free. And these are the ones you also get if you spend some money. <laughs> So, and that's $30 if you want to do that, which isn't too bad. You get almost 1,900 D-Gems. Um, I would probably would not buy this at all, though, unless you already reach level 50. Because 1,850 is quite a few multis for only $30. That's a hell of a deal. But again, that is for those who are spending money. Same with the Welcome Pack. Very good deal. $11 for the, for the lot here. Uh, you got the 7-day login bonus. You got the 15-day, the beginner pack. Uh, Apprentice level 20 pack. And the Journeyman pack level 30. So, a lot of different things that you can get in this game um, early on if you are willing to spend a little bit. But you don't have to. That's that's the important thing to know. You don't have to. All right. And then we also have shops. I believe this is the last one we're going to be going into that has any kind of currency behind it. All right. So, we got um, AP, which is basically the stamina. Um, that's the post active activity potion, I guess what you want to call it. Um, so, you can use your... Uh, Premium currency, your G gems. I actually get that and Arn if you want. Soul Stone Shop. You can even buy Soul Stone packs. And then you have the Friend Point items, which you can use your free to play Friend Points and come in here and purchase stamina and gold as well. So that's quickly going through the shop. Then we have crafting. You can craft SSR Hero Summon tickets and synthesize Soul Stones as well as Skill Stones. Now, Skill Stones, we talked about this briefly earlier. Where you can use this to build uh, the higher grade ones that we can use to actually increase skills for your characters. So as you can see here, you need 10 of the low grade ones. If you look in the bottom left there. Um, so for example, if I wanted to make a, a high grade light um, skill stone, I would need 5 more of the low grade ones. So that's just something to keep an eye on. And that's how you craft them and... That's how you skill up your characters. You can only do, I believe, 10 crafts per week, I believe. But um, that's that's how that works for the most part. Synthonize uh, Soul Stone. We talk about that, talked about this. You need 50 of those stones of, of a character to get that character for free, basically. They even have some UR ones, which are much harder to get. They're very high tier characters right here. The URs. There's only two of them currently in the game, um, from my understanding. But, yeah, those are going to be extremely hard to get a hold of. These are going to be significantly more easier to get, but still, nonetheless, going to be a bit of a grind. But, again, it is an SSR character they're giving you for free. So, you know, it is going to take a bit of time to get those, obviously. And then you have the Hero Summon tickets, kind of the same deal. Summon an SSR Hero. You need 10 of those items right there. Light of, oh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Light of Talent Shards. And this is the Light of Talent Shard right here, and you need 30 of the light of talent shards to make that so that's just kind of a little brief breakdown of that and again these are these are rewards that you get from doing various things within the game whoo all right so we've talked about that let's go to treks now treks are kind of like dispatch missions if you guys have ever heard of those let's go ahead and collect a reward right now i'll talk about this briefly as well so you can actually get 100 EXP. These are the ones that I really not, don't really do very often. They're not really worth it to me unless I'm just trying to complete my daily mission real quick. And I'm in a, you know, I'm in a hurry and they're only five minutes long for the most part. So it doesn't take long if that's what you're trying to do. But then there's other ones that give you better rewards. You actually can get a uh, upgrade material box, which is nice. You can even get an elixir, which is nice. Uh, they even have some rewards for an end fairy which you can use uh, for various things like EXP, I believe. And then you also have the one-star leveling material box. And they have other ones, too. Like, they go up here. You can get 10 of these, uh, 10 elixir, water elixirs, and two rainbow elixirs. But the you can see the time's 12 hours. And if you go to the trek preparations, I believe I need five fire. Yeah, I need five fire heroes that are at least level 30 so you'd have to put five of those in there launch the trek and then wait 12 hours but definitely worth it to get a lot of rewards like that same thing down here you can get five low grades that already give you halfway to getting a high grade one which you can also get as a bonus reward um which is really interesting and usually 
when there's a type behind it, like this one's water, this one's earth, and again, you can call these just blue or green. Um, you want to, they'll, they'll usually want you to use the characters that are at a type disadvantage. So if we actually go down here and we see that this is water or blue, it's probably going to ask us to use fire. And as you can see, it does. It wants us to use fire types at least 30, at level 30, and want us to use four though. So that's something to look forward to to kind of quickly know what you're going to be getting yourself into. And you can also get essence, which essence is used to kind of fill out the skill tree, which we're going to get into as well when we get to the characters. But that's the trek. The trek um, is pretty awesome. And you can do that all day, every day. Very cool stuff. We have the guide here. I'm not going to go too much into this. This is basically the journal. Shows you the metal records. Which obviously I don't. I haven't done any of these yet. Uh, it'll tell you what you need to do to get the metal. Like for example, this one wants you to use 45,000 stamina. This one up here wants you to reach account rank 50, join a thousand raids, etc., etc. So I haven't done any of those yet, obviously, so I haven't played that long. We have campaign record, which, again, it just kind of shows you how far you've gotten in the story. Go to the record book. Just kind of tells you when you started your journey. It tells you just little facts about your account, which is really cool. I like that. It's kind of like a like a, a trip down memory lane, if you will. Equipment guide. This just kind of shows you what all types of equipment that you've gotten. Uh, the, some of the equipment are actually, you know, uh, element type. Which, if you go to here, we got one of the swords so far. We've got one of the armor pieces. And we've got one of the accessories, the four-star ones. Um, for actually the blue or ice or water type, whatever you want to call it. So, very cool there. Oops, let me go back. And then you have the link guide. Um, there are certain characters in the game that if you have... Uh, the, the certain characters together on your team they can do combo skills and this is kind of showing you what they're over I'm sorry they're called overhead skills if you want to be precise so you can see here complicated link skill you got to have this character and that character which I do for patrol link skill you got to have this character and this character to be human I don't have that overhead skill be, or I can't do that overhead skill because I don't have the UR but I do have the other two um, here's another overhead skill here, Moon and Sun. Uh, I've got Sophia, but I do not have Luna. If I had Luna and Sophia on the same team, they could do Moon and Sun, which is an overhead skill. They'll even show you a little video preview if you want of the skill in action. You even get D gems uh, for having both those characters. So, you know, it just goes all the way down. It'll show you your progress, show you that, in progress, all that good stuff, etc., etc. Okay. So that is the link guide. All right, and then we have the hero guide. Basically just showing you what all heroes you've gotten from every different little branch. Um, City Robots, for example, I've already got every one of them. You can see here I have all these characters, and then you get a reward for that as well. Um, you pretty much get rewarded for ev almost everything. 19 out of 19 on this one, the Primitive Tribes. I've pulled all of them as well. Gotta love your uh, reptile men. <laughs> your lizard men, rather. So that's pretty much what that is. Um, just, you know, Hero Journal and stuff like that. Um, and then we have the settings. You can go in here and turn your graphic quality from low all the way to best. Screen refresh rate, low to high. Basic skill effects, show HP in battle, auto lock SR and better heroes. I would definitely recommend turning that on uh, your device. You can set all this stuff up. Of course, I'm on an emulator right now, but if you're on phone, uh, it'll be the same. Push notifications. You can turn those all off or on. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do. Shows your info. You can link your account. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, language. Select language. Um, let's see what else we got to go over here. We got special. All right. These are some of the game modes in the game now. So this is special. You can do Terra Shift. Terra Shift is really nice. You can do two of each of these categories per day, and they each have their own little difficulty levels as well. And the higher the difficulty level, the better the rewards. You got normal, elite, expert, and master. For example, an expert right now, these are some of the rewards you can get. Uh, gold, uh, because that is the merchant's treasury. Mystics Warehouse, you can get upgrade materials. And Warrior's Armory, you can get all kinds of equipment. Now, as it say down, it'll say down here in the bottom left, you can purchase up to two entry chances for each dungeon, which you can see I've already done all those, and these are per day. Um, your entries will be fully restored in 4 hours and 33 minutes. What that means is the daily reset will be in 4 hours and 33 minutes. So then I'll be able to do two of each of these again. So very nice way to keep, you know, 
collecting resources every day. And eventually you might get to a point where you can start hoarding your resources, which is really nice. Now we have Dimension Gate. Dimension Gate allows you to get uh, specific soul stones for these characters. As you see, we get one for Ash, Sophia, Ren, Aria, and I figure what that one was. I think it's Malpian or however you say his name. Uh, you get that after beating 1410 a story. So not all these will be unlocked when you first start. Uh, for example, if we go to Sophia, the one I've been working on the most, you go to Expert here, uh, for me anyway, and you can see here you can actually get her Sophia Soulstone. You can grab um, SSR to UR Soulstone box, and you can also acquire an upgrade material box. And you can do this three times per day as well. Um, I, pr I would say focus on just one at a time until you get the desired stuff that you need. Don't try to like spread yourself out too much. You know, spread yourself too thin. That might not be a good idea uh, because you can only get three attempts per day. Now, raid is definitely the most unique one of the three because it says there's only, you know, zero out of five opportunities or whatever. But you can actually do more than five per day, which is really nice. I think if you actually played from morning till night, you could probably get at least maybe seven, maybe eight runs of raid in per day, which is actually pretty cool. And you got three different bosses you can choose from. Um... Let me go to Fafnir here. All right. And you'll see there's different people's rooms right here. Like, I see I actually have a boss already summoned. I summoned a level 7 boss. When you first start, um, when you summon a boss, you'll start at summon 1. When you beat a level 1 boss, then you can do a 2. And then you beat 2, then you can summon a level 3, etc., etc., until you reach maximum level. And, of course, the higher the level, the harder they're going to be, but the better the rewards. It'll tell you how many people can participate. Like, for example, my room that I created up here, I can have up to 15 people. I'm currently in third place. I, I brought in the wrong team, and it screwed me. But that's beyond the point. It'll show you who's winning in, in uh, damage, total damage. Uh, the person that gets first place, uh, second and third, get bonus rewards. Um, but nonetheless, when the boss is defeated, everybody gets rewarded for it, and you get some really good stuff, a lot of good equipment. This is definitely the best place to farm up equipment. Um, thus far in my opinion you could summon a boss here uh, If you go to summon boss right now, you'll see that I already have one summoned, So I can't summon another one, but you generally click that button and summon one or you can join one um, Some people will have their rooms completely public Some will only show you their room if you're a friend or in their guild So keep an eye on that you can even tell your friends. Hey, I summon a boss come uh, come fight it It's almost dead. You know you could set up things like that if you want via the chat or discord or whatever You're using to talk to your uh, your peeps um, you can see the first time. You can see the ones that are finished, which there is none finished right now. But when they are, that's where you go and collect your reward. Very, very cool there. And you can do that, like I said, a few times a day. Now we have challenges. This is another game mode. This allows you to do arena. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is PvP. I mean, let's be real here. This is PvP. I'm currently like Silver 3. Since I've made some changes to my team, I've been on quite a winning streak right now. So that's pretty dope. Um, you can see here the top five. Resk, Bear, Banana King, Chio, and Emberella. I think Resk is actually my friends list, so I'm actually friends with the number one player in PvP right now. So I feel kind of kind of special, I guess. <laughs> uh, and of course, you can see your uh, PvP re uh, tries at the top. As you see, I'm three out of five, 15 minutes to get another try. Um, and then you can see your arena medals that you can use in the arena shop, which is also down here in the bottom left. Um, you can see arena info. Wait for it to load up. You can see your league rewards as well. Currently, my league rewards um, is 60 D gems. This is a good way to get your D gems, um, guys, throughout the week, every week. So very nice there. Uh, I think we froze. Yes, we froze. So I may need to make a cut here in the video. And we're back. So guys, as you can see here, you can see the actual rankings for the league and stuff like that. As you see... Um, you can check out friend info as well. Um, I'm currently 17 on the, my friends list. I don't play as much PvP as everyone else does. And I am indeed friends with the number one currently in PvP right now, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so you guys can see that. Um, another thing we want to talk about in challenges, we also have Expiration. Now this game mode is also pretty cool. You can go from normal elite to expert all the way up to master. You can continue like your journey um, just by using one token. You can go as far as you can go. Um, I think the, t the, let's go into it real quick. Let me show you. So I like to call it a wheel. It looks like an old pirate ship wheel, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can do this once per day. So 
What I like to do is I like to go as far as I physically can. And if I hit a wall and I can no longer go any further, I will reset and then I'll go as far as I can go yet again. You know, and that's what you just do. So you start off at the easiest difficulty mode and you go as high as you can go to hit a wall. And then you wait for reset, use your item, go in and do it again. And just keep collecting all those good rewards. Um, some of the rewards, for example, as you can see here, is you can get some essence. You can get some uh, low-grade skill stones, which you're going to need a lot of those. You can see some of the enemies here on this current. Now, this does not always stay the same. The enemies and rewards will change depending on what you know exploration mode that you're on. Currently, you can see I'm up to 1,900 miles. 2,000 is the max for this. So if I beat that, then I'll unlock master. Then I can go as far as I can go in that reset and then go all the way from the beginning and go as far as i can go again collecting all those rewards every single week very very cool um and what's really cool about exploration is if you go in and you actually lose a character even though you still win it'll let you grab another character and throw it in your team and keep going to see if you can try and beat the next the next stage in this case for me it would be 1900 miles and then 2000 so exploration very very cool you also get these various buffs up here which you can see in the top left very cool stuff there. Um, just all in all, exploration is very awesome. Because it's literally like you're going on your own little personal journey. I like it. And you got a lot of those rewards. So, cool stuff there. Let's go back to lobby. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the gotcha. Then we're going to quickly, briefly talk about the characters and gear and stuff like that. And then that should wrap up our beginner guide. And I do apologize. The video is pretty long, but I want to cover as much stuff as I can. So let's go down here to Gotcha. You can also grab Gotcha from the actual uh, tab up here as well. You know, down here you got <clears throat> Gotcha right next to Hero and Lobby. So right now we got Premium Gotcha banner, and then we got the Legendary Gotcha. Legendary Gotcha basically is gonna be is basically a guaranteed SSR that you're gonna get after you've done ten multi summons on the Premium Gotcha. And what you can get if you go to appearance rates is you have a 10% chance to actually pull a legendary SSR or what they call a pickup SSR. You have a 10% chance to pull uh, Lamilla, Aglaia, I probably butchered that name, and Edmund. Um, so you have a 10% chance to pull one of them and a 90% chance to pull any of these other SSR heroes that you can also find in the other banner. Um, but either way, you're guaranteed an SSR. You can basically consider this an SSR pity system if you will and the legendary gotcha also has its own little uh, pity system if you do 10 summons on a legendary gotcha you can get a you are soul shard times one two three four and five then you can turn those all in eventually to get a ur character that we talked about earlier now this isn't the only way to get ur shards but it's probably the f it's probably the fastest way even though it's slow very slow unless of course you wail out so it's still slow, but it's probably faster than the other method. Um, premium gotcha. Like I said, you do 10 multis. You can grab a legendary summon. And then you do 10 of those, etc. Et so basically, you do 1,000 summons. You're going to get all of these shards, which still isn't all that much. But whew, it's a very very long process let's put it that way guys very very long process but any anywho so there is a multi summon uh pity system as well every ten, every multi summon you do you're going to be guaranteed an sr or higher so i recommend only doing multi summons there really is no um advantage to doing single summons i don't see anything that would make me want to do single summons in this game there's there, there's just no there's nothing to it a multi guarantees you at least an SR, and in my book, that is definitely more than enough to want to only do multis. Plus, your multi summons also count for the up up here, which allows you to get soul stones for um, random characters. You can get two for two multis, four for four, six for six, eight for eight, and then, of course, you get the world shards times 30 after you've done uh, 10 multis, which, again, is for the legendary gotcha. So it's definitely worth it only doing the multi, in my opinion. I don't see any benefit in doing a single summon um, we also get tickets um, throughout various events and daily logins and stuff like that that'll, that you could save up to do 10 tickets, which also counts as a multi. It doesn't count as a multi for the top, I don't believe, but it does count as a multi in the sense that you're going to still be able to guarantee an SR higher. So I'd still save up 10 tickets before I did those as well, unless you're very, very anxious to try and get a summon and get a, 
a YOLO SSR like I did the other day off camera, which rip. <laughs> So the appearance rate is 2% drop rate for an SSR, 25% for an SR, and 70, almost 73% for a rare. Now, I know a lot of you are upset that I've played the Korean version that it was 5% drop rate for an SSR, and we're only getting two. Um, I can understand that fully. Um, not really much we can do about it. Unfortunately, maybe they'll change that when they do the full global release, or maybe they'll change it later on. I have no idea. I know a lot of things in this game have changed from the Korean version, so it's almost like its own game. Um, in comparison, like of how much stuff that they've changed with characters and stuff like that and how you uh, advance them and et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know what their game plan is, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, we'll talk about that maybe in another video, but nonetheless, 2% is still better than a lot of gotchas right now, especially ones that I've been playing where they're like around 1% or lower. So not too bad, I guess, but I could definitely see where a lot of you are a little bit upset with that that did play the Korean version as well. But... One last thing to talk about, guys, and that is basically the characters. Let's go down here to the hero list. Now, you can get to the hero list as well from going to assembly. You can click assembly here. It'll show your team, and then you can just click one of them, or you can click change. Team. You can change your team name as well, which you can see right here. I call this the babes, even though I changed the team. Now, there's a, a non, there's two non-babes in there because one's a little kid and one's a dude in full armor. So... I'm going to have to change the name of that team. It's not the babes no more. All right. So anyway, so that's just another way you can do it. Um, but anyway, so this is the hero list. And it has nice filters down here in the bottom left. You can filter by all these bad boys. And you can filter by this as well. So let's go ahead and filter by uh, combat ability. This will put my strongest characters in the front. And let's sort only by SSR. So let's go ahead and do that. So there is that. Okay. Um, let's pick a character that's not fully maxed out. Let's go ahead and select you. And let's talk about a few of the things. Now, I'm going to make a video for uh, full equipment guides and full skill guides. And even character overview. So I'm not going to really go into any of that in this beginner guide. Look for those uh, videos to come in the near future. So first, we want to talk about character level. SSRs, um, even SRs, I think all characters actually can only go to level 40 until you raise their level cap. How do you raise their level cap? You basically have to feed in a dupe of that character, and they will gain five levels up to a maximum of 65. So you need five dupes in total to max level a character. Of course, when you do feed in dupes, you get additional stats to max HP, physical or magical attack, defense, and attack speed. You also have a grading system, which you can see here, I'm a grade C. To, feed, to raise your grade system, you have to use the elixirs, which we talked about earlier. As you can see here, I need 20 of these light elixirs, and I could take them up to a B. You could take them up to an A, and then you could take them up to an S. Uh, we have a fortify button down here. This is where you feed in your dupes to your characters. This is what levels them up outside of just getting basic EXP from doing your treks and from doing actual story missions and stuff like that. Now, type... Um, if you match up the fodder with the actual type of the character, you will get a bonus of EXP. If you look at our normal fairy EXP item here, you can see that we actually go to level 38. If I use the fire one instead, we don't actually hit 38. So you do get a bonus um, for using the proper typing. Now, these fairies give you the most EXP in the game. Um, you can get them as normal, rare, SR. I'm not sure if there's SSR fairies as well. I didn't play extensively in the Korean version, so somebody may be able to let me know that in the comment section below. But I do know it goes up to SR, and the higher the rarity of the actual EXP item, the higher EXP that you can get. You can also get uh, characters as normals, rares, and you can even feed in, I believe, SRs. But I don't know if I'd want to do that. Uh, but anyways, so you could feed these in. So if I was feeding into a blue or an ice or water type, whatever you want to call it, I would use him. Dark, I would use him. Light, I would use that. Fire, I would use that. And you can get a lot of these items mostly from story, uh, both story difficulty and um, hard mode. So that's pretty much leveling up. We'll just go ahead and use this for the sake of showing you. We'll just go ahead and fortify that. And you can click register multiple as well if you want to just do a filtering and just spam feed a lot in. Stuff like that. Uh, very cool. As you can see, like we could just click that and click register. And it'll register the two normal items right there. So, I mean, you could do that as well if you want to save some time. 
So that is character leveling up. Uh, as you can see, they have equipment. You can um, attach a weapon. You can equipment fortification, which basically means fe basically the same as fortify for characters. Basically feeding in other weapons to level that weapon up. Uh, raise level cap, same as the character. You got to feed in a dupe to raise it to go from 40 to 45 all the way up to 65. So, of course, you got to feed in five dupes of the same weapon to get it to max level. Feeding in dupes will increase the first substat, which is usually highlighted in the background with like a like a reddish beige color. I don't really know what, you know, it's that color right there where you see accuracy. It's basically that. You can even see it on other gear as well, like my critical rate. Uh, you can even see it right here on the status effect. And then there's some special weapons that actually have multiple substats. Well, you see how this one has status effect up, uh, success rate 3.27%. That will not go up with feeding a dupe. Only the color, only the stat that is highlighted um, with that pinkish beige type of color. That is the stat that will actually go up higher by feeding in dupes. The other substats are just additional substats that you get on the gear. Um, I, I even have, I believe, a couple pieces of gear that actually have three substats so those are very very good gear obviously uh, you can also unlock weapons you can lock them if you don't want to ever sell them on accident or whatever or feed them in as, as fodder for exp or you can just flat out sell them to get you know various items as well like we can click this right here we can just click sell we can sell it and it'll tell you what you're gonna get so you know simple as that we also have some items let me sh see if i have any that i could show you oh let's go back to him Let's go back to our let's go to our armor now because you guys should get three types of gear like I said you get weapons armor and accessories um, and these little green arrows that have a number showing up that's saying that if I would put that gear and took it off my other character and put it on him he'd gain that much combat ability or combat power battle power however you want to you know classify that as so like that basically um, and as you can see, this is one of my gears I was talking about that has three substats. But again, only the one that's highlighted with the pinkish beige color is the one that will go up if you feed dupes of the same type of weapon into it. Um, there's items like this that you'll see for all three types of gear. Attack, I'm sorry, <laughs> armor, weapons, and accessories. They all have these little gear things like this. They're called level boost equipment. You can get a one star, a two star, a three star, a four star, I believe even five stars. Basically, these are the fodder that you want to feed in to gain maximum EXP. Now, I'm not saying this is going to max out a gear with just one piece of this. I'm just saying that these are made entirely for giving you EXP to your gear. As you can see, they don't have any kind of substats. Their base stats are really low. They're literally there to just feed into other gear to level it up for you so if you see these it's not really gear that you should be using guys it's gear that you should be feeding into other gear to level it up it's basically a an exp booster item similar to the fairies that we showed you when we was leveling up our characters that look like fireballs so there's that if we go back in here again um so we talked about fortify we talked about grade we talked about raising a level cap Basically down here, you have to feed in a dupe. And again, you get base stats that go up. You also get max skill level enhancements, which you're also going to need that if you start really, you know, skilling up your characters. Um, and then we have the the abilities, what I like to call the skill tree. The skill tree, um, it starts off with one linear path and it branches off into multiple paths, which can branch off into even further paths. Um, I call these little things here nodes. Um, you use essence, which you can see up in the top right. I have 1,200 of. You click them. It'll tell you how much it costs. You activate it. So we can just go ahead and do the first one here just for demonstration. So there we go. I acquired an ability. It raised our combat ability a little bit. And if you actually go over here to ability info, it'll tell you the progress that you've made. I've unlocked 1 out of 42 nodes, 2% in total, 0 out of 7 red nodes, and 1 out of 35 blue nodes. And so far, I've only gained 18 HP from the nodes I've unlocked. So the more nodes, the more, of course, ability info you're going to receive. So very, very cool there. Um, there's very strategic ways to build those up as well. If you're looking to build a character a certain way, depending on what type of gear and skills you're investing into. But like I said, I will have a full tutorial breakdown video for both equipment on how to structure your equipment, what type of substats to look for certain characters. And I'll also be doing the same thing for skills 
in the skill tree. So definitely look for that in the future. Okay, so there that's pretty much explains all that in a nutshell for the most part. Except for when I do the in-depth guides for each of those things. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is for that. Now, if you ever, if you look over here on the left side, you can view the full concept art of these characters, which is really awesome. I think SSRs and higher are the only ones that get full concept art. Um, I think the other ones kind of just like fade over top of the menu, so it doesn't look as beautiful. I'll show you with an SR character in a moment. You'll see the difference. All right, we've got a 3D character. You could even rotate that with your mouse for an emulator or if going on your phone do with your finger. Pretty cool there. Uh, there's also a hero uh, journal. Kind of gives you like a little hero info, a little background of the character really quick. So as you just a little bit of that. You can even click that preview button over there to preview his skills. Very cool. You can look at his link skills, or I'm sorry, overhit skills, and what characters you need on your team to be able to pull that type of skill off, which you can see here. We got early black wings, the fell god's power, and teacher and student. And as you can see, I'm missing a character or two in each of those to pull that off. Um, and then we can just back out of that real quick. And if you go here to hero review, you can see what people think about the character within the app. I would not take this rating for anything. And the reason why I say that is when games give you these built-in ratings, they can be very deceiving because you could get people that are just going to low ball or, or high ball based on just their personal experience, depending on what part of the game they're in. The character may seem OP or very underwhelming, especially if they build the character wrong or right. And some people may just troll and just leave a bad rating or a good rating for the hell of it. Some people will rate a character high just because they have big boobs. Some people will rate a character bad just because the design looks ugly. So never, ever go by these in-app ratings, guys. I'll try to do my best to break down all these characters in separate videos to give you guys a good idea, you know, kind of a foundation of how decent or how bad a character is um, in the future. So I hope you guys stick around for that as well. All right, so um, another thing to look at is what type of characters these characters are. If you notice in the top right of all these character images, they have a, a color associated with them and a symbol with inside that color. Um, so as you can see here, my uh, first character is purple with a shield. If you see characters with shields, those are tank characters. Those are basically tanks. If you see ones that have kind of like uh, like wings coming out of the sides with like kind of like a, a star in the middle, those are your support healers uh, type of characters. And then if you see the ones with the double daggers or swords, those are your attackers, your your um, basically your DPS. So you basically have three types of characters right now. You have tanks, healers, supporters, and DPS. So definitely look for that when you're trying to build certain team comps. Um, and again, the colors, I've heard people explain it two different ways. You just simply call them by their color, yellow, purple, green, red, and blue. Or you could call them fire, water, earth, light, and dark. Um, you could even call water, ice, it doesn't matter. You know, you, know, you, you get the idea. Basically, basically the elements. And just like all elements um, in, in RPG games, um, fire... Is strong against earth earth is strong against water and water is strong against fire and of course light and dark are uh, weak and strong against each other but strong against everything else so there you go I mean that's pretty much the breakdown guys if you want to see how to build a team and click team assembly like I said you could go through here and build different teams you can build up to five teams which is pretty cool you can remove members we can go here for example click the leader and then we can click the leader and just swap it with somebody down here Go to our second person, swap with somebody down here. And, I mean, you pretty much got it. You can also filter and stuff like that as well. Um, you got filters down here. You can see what the leader's ability is going to do. And leader ability is definitely going to dictate kind of how you're going to build your team. Because that leader skill needs to make the most. You need to basically make the most of that leader skill to make it useful. Um, and another thing you want to do when you build your team is actually go to formation. Go to formation settings. I'm just going to do a quick preview of kind of how I like, to I like to do things. So if I'm running a tank, I definitely want the tank to be in the front row because I want him to take a majority of the damage because um, that's his job. He's supposed to tank. I like to put the healer and supporters all the way in the back here because they actually get an additional 30% defense. So it makes them a bit more tanky so they can stay alive to keep healing my guys in the front and in the middle row. 
damage reduction of 15 percent for each hero in the front row so that's good for him and i also like to build him with damage reduction anyway but I, like i said i'll go into individual characters and builds and stuff like that in the future and since i'm running two uh tanks i guess i'll run both these in the front row and i'll probably try to bring a dps friend and then i'll have a nice balance of support healers in the back dps in the middle and my tanks in the front so that's kind of a quick you know preview of kind of how i'd like to build my formations and most certain circumstances sometimes i like to switch it up a little bit depending but guys that is pretty much everything i hope i didn't miss anything if i did i'm sure you'll let me know in the comment section below i hope i helped a lot of you out sorry the video is super long my voice is starting to go but anyways if you want to see some more overhead content more guides tutorials gameplay videos news and updates definitely subscribe for more as always and we're also gonna be doing other content here on the channel as well so don't worry about that and Definitely like, a like the video. If you did, comment below what you guys think. Was this helpful? I hope so. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have an awesome day wherever you are. And don't forget to join us in the Discord in the description below. And go to the Overhit channel if you want to talk about Overhit. Go to Epic 7 or any other game. Or just go to General and talk about anything. And we're going to be there waiting for you guys. So if you're going to keep the conversation going before and after the video, definitely join us in the Discord. And I will catch you guys all later. Have an awesome day wherever you are. Until then, as always, peace.